Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Cricket Talks. We're going to talk about India versus England and also a bit of New Zealand versus Australia. Sundar hits a 96, India dominating England. India lose three wickets very, very quickly, meaning they have to go out and bowl. And how are the West Indies doing against Sri Lanka? Let's find out on Cricket Talks. Here are our guests, Adam Big Cricket Podcasters for Cricket Talks. And firstly, we're going to talk about India versus England. And what are your thoughts on that match? I mean, India seem to be dominating. Sundar hits a massive 96 not out. And then all the tail enders fell on the other side of the wicket. Process this. Crawley out for five. England struggling against spinners. Bairstow, Golden Duck. Joe Roach fighting hard to bat. And Ashwin bowling brilliantly as well as an upcoming ODI and T20 series. Yeah, I think it's excellent, uh, first of all, from uh, Sundar because uh, he's, he has played uh, very less first-class matches and actually coming into the team and showing whenever he's got chances because actually he didn't get many chances. Because of Ravinder Jadija's injury, uh, there was a lot of fight for him because he, he can't bowl really very well, uh, but not better than Aksa Patel. So... No, the tail enders uh, almost uh, actually, if they could have supported him, maybe he got to his century because this is not the first time he has missed out on a century. Uh, you know, in the second test match versus England, 85 not out and now 96 not out. So I think quite a feeling bad for him. Yeah, and yeah. saying this, I think uh, Sundar has played a very good innings. And if you come to the bowlers now, as England is batting now, all the Ashwin has taken three wickets and Aksa Patel has taken three wickets. So I think the spinners are doing good again. And I think if they continue it this way, in India can win by an innings. Good, good point you have there. And I'm just seeing like the way India are heading this year, how do you think they're going to go in this ODI and T20 series upcoming against England? Uh, well, I think the T20 international series, I feel it's going to be really exciting because we're going to play all those five T20Is in Motera Cricket Stadium or rather I would say Narendra Modi Cricket Stadium. And I don't want England to keep complaining about the pitch because uh, next year T20 World Cup will be in India. And since Motera Cricket Stadium is the largest cricket stadium, you could expect a final or a semi-final to be held there. So that time, if you complain, that there's no point. So I think they need to just get used. Even if they lose the series, I think... Uh, they need to just stick on and play well because uh, they will have experience because playing five feet one DIs in the world's largest cricket stadium and it's a spinning track. A lot of cricket stadiums in India are spinning tracks. So I think they need to get used to it and play good cricket. Uh, well, I would predict it as 3-2, India 3. And I think uh, England will also play very good because they have David Malan, they have Jason Roy. I don't know why uh, Joe Root is missed out, but uh, I think they have good players and Morgan is there come back for the limited overs format and Adil Rashid is there, Adil Rashid is there and a lot of good ballers and good players to play on so I think Adil Rashid will play a crucial role in that. The pitch well there's been an improvement between this test and the previous one. Yeah and I think uh, if you if you see the ODIs have been played in Pune and the T20s all the five being played in the same stadium the Ahmedabad stadium so I think they will get used to the stadium. I think playing these two test matches, I think they will know the conditions. So even as a visiting team, I think they will be familiar with the conditions and they should pick the right choices at that time. And to see that no one is injured and to uh, make the right choices when the team, like which bowler to take and which batsman to take, should we should look at the form and pace at that point of time. So I think the choice is very important and... Uh, in, even India should look into uh, which order to take because for India only some are performing while the other are not performing. So looking at the taking the right person is very important. And since it's T20s, we have to take like Hardik Pandya and KL Rahul. We have to take for as a batsman and as bowlers we can we have a good bowling line. So I think they should uh, see the right bowler. They should not. Uh, look at their record, but they should see the present form. That's what I believe they should look into. I would agree with you quite a bit. Quick update on the Sheffield Shield. Cameron Green has hit an 182 of 258 deliveries against Queensland. 
A fabulous innings from him. He is a run machine and he's doing really well. On to Australia versus New Zealand now. So I think on New Zealand, Australia, I think Ashton Agar has been bowling really, really well. And with his six for 30 in the third T20, it just adds to what a good cricketer he is. Look, he's had some historical innings and then he's in and out, in and out of the team. But I think he has cemented himself. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think he has cemented his spot there because uh, Adam Zampa is there and a lot of spinners are coming up from the big bash league, from the domestic cricket in Australia. So uh, he's a good all-rounder. You know, we have seen some big hits from him. And yeah, he's a brilliant bowler. I don't know why he keeps coming in and out of the Australian team, but uh, he's a player that should uh, be you know, fixed in that team, into the spot there. So good point I mean. you make. What, what else do you think about, like, a society Australia, New Zealand? Like, there's one game left, a series are tied. Who do you think is going to win? Well, uh, I don't have answers for that, but I think uh, Australia have, uh, have a fight back because you know, they don't have Warner, they don't have Smith, but uh, Finch has been doing well because, you know, in the Big Bass League with Melbourne Renegades, yes. he didn't play very well. And... And there was doubt whether he'll play in the T20 International Series versus New Zealand, but he has made a very good comeback. And uh, yeah, in third T20, he scored, I don't know the exact runs, but in the fourth, 79 of 55 balls. So that's very good. And everything changed in one over with uh, Jameson ball. So really interesting. I would say Australia will fight back and maybe get uh, the series win. I would predict that. Yes. So I'm going to talk about West Indies versus Sri Lanka. And the series is tied 1-1. Gunifalaka hit a solid 56 to help Sri Lanka win the second T20, which was a brilliant effort by the team. What would your thoughts be on Sri Lanka at the moment and West Indies? I mean, it's the West Indies playing at home. How much of an advantage is like a home game? Because like... As soon as they drop out the crowd, teams seem to perform. Like, look at England with that crowd. They were doing so well, and suddenly the crowd comes in. It's such a huge factor, isn't it? Yeah, I think the home factor is absolutely an advantage. But uh, I think teams are expected to play well even in uh, other countries where they go. So I think, uh, yeah, Sri Lanka, yes, Sri Lanka has a very good advantage. But, you know, in the first test, uh, first T20, pardon me, First T20, uh, we have seen uh, Polar in six sixes. So uh, nice fight back. I don't know how to pronounce that opener's name, seriously, but uh, good fight back. I would say. And when I, I, I saw the highlights of that match, the, the West Indies and Sri Lanka, and I think every ball was important there in that match. It was a low scoring game. Even if you see Pollard's, Pollard hitting six sixes, that was very crucial for the West Indies because wickets were falling from the other end and many batsmen weren't able to hit there. And I think that six sixes were very crucial. And their bowlers, Dhananjaya had bowled very well. He took those wickets and also accept uh, that over, other overs he bowled very well. So though West Indies uh, finished off before the 15 overs, before 15 overs only they finished. But I think we should not see the balls there. They had less wickets there. Wickets were open and the pressure was on them at that time. So, just thinking there and batting, batting and hitting the right shot was important for them. So, not just going for the shot, but looking for the right ball and hitting the correct ball. So, I think it was a very close match there. Sri Lanka also had plenty of chances to win. It was very close and I think uh, I really enjoyed watching the even the highlights. I really enjoyed that. So if you see Pollard six sixes are very important, and uh, Dan and Jaya bowled very well. I think these are the points that I found that match. That, that's that's some good points. And now we're going to actually continue on. So that'll be an interesting series. How ready are India for this year of cricket, like 2021? How ready are they? Are Start with ready. Oh. Yeah, absolutely very well prepared, I think. Uh, because beating Test cricket, beating One Day Internationals, beating T20, 
you know they are one of the top teams we, uh, even in australia uh, lot of australia we have seen we missed out virat kohli we missed out uh, mohammad shami we missed out umesh sharaf lot of players lot of experienced players and that young guns coming and performing well and test cricket is absolutely very easy for india i feel for all these youngsters coming and play and t20 cricket is also uh, very good but the one day international series um, in the recent games india has played well so I, i worry about that but we are a good team and could expect a lot from the guys yes and i feel india should worry in the one one day international because in the test if you see india is very good so because the opener one of them is batting well the other is in and the middle order is great rishab pant washington sundar all are giving their knocks in time of need so and t20 is since it's only 20 overs i think if hitting and making a good score is enough if you know uh, the wickets are not that uh, to be seen t20 cricket just hit them whoever has a good strike rate is good for t20 but for odis it's a mind game because i feel odis you have the middle overs where everything will become slow you have power play then you can start the things but starting after the power play and playing through the middle overs is very difficult for a for playing the odis so we have to look for the right all rounders there we have to see like who can make india play correctly in the middle overs who can play a knock in the middle overs so that's a slot where india should look for and i think they can uh, find such a player who will be in form at that point of time and i surely think they will come up with a solution for that that yeah, is i i wanted to say something else because uh, we don't have a lot of matches scheduled for now uh, uh, until august where india will pack their bags and go to england so i think uh, again india will be going to england and playing uh, versus england again but this time in england and uh, you know they play decent cricket uh, overseas and uh, we could expect a lot from these guys because already this test series is almost for india and uh, i think it will be good that that's it's actually quite interesting and obviously leading up this match you know let's assume so if it's a draw or india win it's india versus new zealand in the world test championship final but I'm still going to ask you the massive question who will win the world test championship this year uh, Well this is an interesting question I have asked my co-host a lot of times on the podcast uh I think India have done a very good job uh, in the tour of Australia we you know I've said already because we lost many players but still we could fight back have a fight back under the captaincy of Rahane and uh, after doing that much effort i don't think uh, it should go in vain i think they they need they deserve a good thing and i think uh, a world test uh, world test championship final or a title will you know get them okay uh, predicting it i think uh, india will uh, maybe get into the world test championship final and be aware new zealand aren't uh, to be missed because new zealand we already lost the test series versus new zealand uh, in 2020 and uh, they're not uh, the team to be missed and i think uh, they need to play carefully and get the title well i like, i think yeah yeah thank you i'll quickly highlight before i ask you um is england a bit with a versing new zealand just before the world test championship final so that might give new zealand some free training so i'm going to ask you matreya do you think that Yes. India could struggle because they don't have that opposition practice maybe the IPL but you know Yes yeah that's a very good point I feel but as you see India India can go and do things in any situation that's what we have seen because in Australia I think they they will take some time to get adjusted but if they get adjusted I think no one can stop them so good opposition uh we might not we might not have practiced well in many grounds but that doesn't matter because we have players who perform and we have even a bench the bench players also are very strong so if one player isn't performing we have another and we have players who are played in we have players who are played in all continents and in different conditions and 
they are very senior players like Ashwin, Ishan Sharma, Virat Kohli, so Pujara and many other players we have. So looking at this, I think that shouldn't be a problem to worry for now because uh, in any conditions India has able India has been able to cope up and I think in future also I think they can do the same since they are the they are going to the World Test Championship finals. I think they will be a very prepared team and I think this should not be a weakness for them. I think they have gone through so much all these years. I think they will be ready for whatever comes next. So yeah, I want to pose another uh, situation because uh, normally Cheteshwar Pujara plays the county, uh, county cricket at uh, England, but this time he won't be able to play because it's been signed uh, by, by the Chennai Super Kings at the IPL. So I want to ask you, someone of you, uh, I have this question in mind, is it going to affect him? I just want to ask this question. Any? As in like, it was, what will affect them, do you reckon? Like, I think generally professional level cricket teams always have a good level of preparation. I think one of the toughest things is like the changes in climate and stuff like that. That could be a problem. But I think most of the time, you know, playing in away conditions, I think the biggest factor is the crowd, in my opinion, on that question you asked. Anyway, we're going to get on to the differences between test and ODI cricket because like for example I noticed during the Ashes in the World Cup a common pattern Australia versus England and then the Cricket World Cup one team it's never well, it's rare to see both teams win the Ashes in the World Cup in the same year because they have to focus on one or the other and picking and choosing but test and ODI cricket how similar are they do you think? Well I don't think there, uh, there is much difference because that's a red ball and here is a white ball yeah, there are some climatic conditions, some uh, pitch conditions. You have to play for day, uh, five days at test cricket and the one day international is only one single day. Uh, well, I don't think there is a lot of difference, but surely there is a difference because uh, we have seen in uh, different situations, uh, we have gone through different situations where uh, we, we need, in test cricket, where we needed uh, a lot of run rate. Uh, example, India versus Australia in third test match. Uh, if it was a T20 cricket or type of one day international cricket, the limited overs format, uh, easily we could have won. I mean, we could have seen big hits. But in test cricket, we don't play that way. And we just play because the ball, I think the ball and the pitch plays a very good, important factor or whatever. It does seem to be the ball much harder in test cricket, like the red ball is harder than the white ball. And then I ask you, Matreya, do you think that like having an ODI series and T20 series before the test series is better or is it better having it after the test series? Yes, I feel we can have the test series before. Only. Like we can have it like how we are having now because in, in, in a test match, we get to see all types of bowlers. We get to play all the bowlers, I feel. And you can take your time and test like how we are going to play the bowler. So if you see many of the test players will play ODIs and T20s, I believe. So a batsman can uh, see, check on himself, how he's going, he's going to react to a bowler. And similarly a bowler, he can bowl to the batsman and see like how he's going to react to different type of ball. And so in test and ODI, I mean ODI and T20 cricket, since it's a limited over format, he can bowl such a ball, which he is not able to hit, which is not good at. We can find out the strengths and weaknesses of people and we can work out. So, in the limited overs, we'll be more ready. In test cricket, we have many overs for the full day. So, if we if we have, we can take our time and adjust. But in ODIs and T20s, we cannot take our time. We have to start from the beginning. So, I think it's better to have a test series before the ODIs and T20 series. I think that's it. Because the other argument is like, if you start an ODI T20 series, the players will be tired. But then again, if you start a test series, the players will be tired anyway. So it doesn't really make much of a difference. I just think that, like, it's hard to rotate because, like, how similar should the ODI team be to the test team for, let's say, England or India? Should it be more or less similar? Just a quick yes or no from you guys. I don't think uh, it should be the same. I don't think because 
uh, a lot of players play test, uh, test cricket differently and multi international cricket differently but there are some players reserved for one format uh, because they don't know how to play i i mean they don't know means uh, they're not good enough to play the, the other format so some players can actually handle the red ball nicely some players can defend nicely some players can have wickets or uh, play the one day test. yeah i well, don't think uh, the same squad is preferable not the Pujara IPL experiment, which is kind of an interesting idea, I suppose. Yeah, yeah he, he will miss the county championship in England. So actually, he could have an, a practice match, kind of practice. He goes to England and play there. But he has chosen the IPL. Yeah, well, it will be good and interesting to see him back in the vaccine test after that. Yeah, one minute. Something. Yes, so Pujara playing IPL is a very, uh, means I didn't uh, like that because I support CSK. I support Chennai Super Kings. And I didn't like that them experimenting in that way. But if you look at the positives, if you see his record in first class T20s, which is quarter he played, he has a decent record. His average is about 30. He has a decent record. So if you see in that way, I think. Uh, he, it's not a bad choice. Just that he isn't form right now. And he hasn't been playing T20 that format for many years. He's been reserved as a test person. So and he plays Ranji Trophy. He doesn't play the side Mustafa Ali Trophy or such T20 for uh, for tournaments. So I don't actually like that. But it's worth a try. We have to see what he has also got. I think no one's looked up to him just because he played test cricket. That doesn't mean he cannot hit. So we have to give him one try. I think at least if we can take make the opportunity, take the opportunity and do what he can do, I think we can see what he has got in other formats also. Yeah. So it's worth a try, but it's uh, too risky. He has certainly dedicated himself to the test format. I think T20 to test is a big leap. I reckon test to ODI is not too big of a leap. Like chucking Labuschagne in the one-day squad for Australia after playing well in the tests, and he did well. Just, I don't think slotting test players straight into T20 is good unless they've tried it one day as as well. See how they go in that. Anyway, thank you so much for having you. Your channel's Atom Big Cricket. Don't forget to subscribe to that. Your podcasters are doing an excellent job. Thank you so much for joining the show. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks for calling us here. Thank you. Thanks for calling us here. Yeah. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Share this podcast with your friends. Share your thoughts in the comment section. I'm sure there'll be a lot of interesting discussion. And thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye for now.